Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving a nice exponential equation. So we have 9 to the power x minus 6 to the power x equals 4 to the power x plus 1 half. And we're going to be solving for x values. So let's go ahead and simplify the right hand side a little bit first. When you have two exponents that are being added, you should know this. So something like a to the power x times a to the power y can always be written as a to the power xy and vice versa. So if, the, oh, so if the exponents are being added, we can always split that up into a product of two numbers or expressions. So let's go ahead and do that here. 9 to the power x minus 6 to the power x equals 4 to the power x multiplied by 4 to the power 1 half. What is 4 to the power 1 half? Obviously, we're looking at the real values here for 4 to the power 1 half, and it just means the square root. So any number x, which is non-negative, to the power 1 half is meant uh, to be square root of x. Because if you multiply this expression by itself, then you get x to the power 1, which is x, and that fits the definition of square root for real numbers. Great, so now we got something that is the square root of 4, which can be written as 2, right? So let's go ahead and rewrite it. 9 to the power x minus 6 to the power x equals 2 times 4 to the power x. Great, so we were able to simplify the right-hand side a little bit. Now what we see is three different powers that has the same, that have the same exponent. They all have the same exponent x, so that's nice. Now, a lot of times this question comes up. Can we take the natural log of both sides? And the answer is why not, right? You can always take the natural log of both sides. Obviously, it's going to be written as ln, but you could also use base 10 log if you want. Now, you can go ahead and do this. Now, this is going to give you something on the right-hand side. Like, if you have the uh, log of a product, then you can definitely write this as a sum of two logs and then this can be moved to the front and obviously simplified a little further so this is nice but on the left hand side we have a problem Houston we have a problem and what is that problem the log of a difference cannot be simplified there's no formula or identity that gives us that right in some specific cases obviously you can have a situation like ln a minus b equals ln a minus ln b but these are just going to have equations that have particular solutions. So it's not true in general. So what do we do? Aligning both sides or logging both sides or taking the natural log or whatever log on both sides is not going to help. So we need to do something different. And that something is actually turning this into a nicer exponential equation. We have kind of too many variables, even though x is the same. The bases are different, so that's problematic. Let's go ahead and do the following. Divide everything by the highest power or highest base. I don't know. However you want to look at it. So let's divide everything by 9 to the power x. 9 to the power x. And we used this technique before. You'll see some similar problems uh, here. Minus 6 to the power x divided by that. Same thing, same thing, same thing. Just divide. Okay. And 9 to the power x cannot be 0. So it's okay to divide both sides by that. Right? Okay. X, if x is negative infinity, this can be 0, but negative infinity is not a number. Okay, so from here we get the following, 1 minus. Obviously, uh, this can be simplified a little bit. I don't know if it's called simplification, but anyways. And this can also be written as 4 over 9 to the power x. Now, this would be nicer if we wrote it as 2 thirds to the power x. And then here's where the critical part starts. Notice, and I hope you did, notice that 4 ninths is 2 thirds squared. Awesome, awesome. And if you raise both sides to the power x, what's going to happen? We're going to have something nice. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Raise both sides to the power x from this identity. And then you get 4 ninths to the power x equals 2 thirds to the power 2x, which can be written as 2 thirds to the power x and then squared. And what does that tell you? This expression right here 
is this expression squared. And what does that mean? It means use substitution. Yay. So we're going to use substitution. Let's go ahead and replace this with something. How about u? All right, so if 2 thirds to the power x is u, then 4 ninths to the power x is going to be 2 thirds to the power x squared, and that can be written as u squared. And then we're going to go ahead and substitute that here. Ooh, that was a straightforward arrow. And here. Okay? All right, cool. Let's go ahead and do it. We get 1 minus u equals 2 times u squared. Awesome. So from this weird exponential, actually from a weirder exponential equation, we got this nicer exponential, and then from the exponential, we got a quadratic. Great. So let's go ahead and put everything on the same side. And you might be thinking, how am I going to solve this equation? There is a quadratic formula, or you can factor it. One of the things I, that I always want you to check if you're solving a polynomial equation, especially with, I don't know, it could be any degree, to check the sum of the coefficients. But in this case, the sum of the coefficients is not zero. So one is not a solution, but if you add the even coefficients, the even powers, then you get the coefficient for the odd power. In other words, the odds equals evens, which means two plus negative one equals one. This means u equals negative one is a solution. And you can easily check that, just plug it in. So since this is a solution, factor theorem tells us u plus one must be a factor, right? And then we're going to factor this accordingly. Sorry for the messy writing. Let me rewrite it. This implies u plus 1 is a factor. All right? Cool, cool. Now, how do we make u plus 1 from this? You know, you could use polynomial division. You can use the quadratic formula. But here's what I'm going to do. To get u plus 1, I'm going to split up the u as 2u. Happy birthday to you if it's your birthday minus u minus 1 equals 0. And now notice that this contains u plus 1 and this contains u plus 1. Factoring by grouping, right? That's why we call it 2u, again one more time, happy birthday, u plus 1 minus, that's like a negative 1 outside, is going to give us u plus 1 again. And this one more time verifies that u plus 1 is actually a common factor or a factor. So now from here we get u plus 1, 2u minus 1, many times 2u, right? And then we're going to go ahead and take a look at each solution. This gives us u equals 1 half, but u is what? Wait, where does u come from, right? Okay, we just didn't um, specify. Okay, we did. 2 thirds to the power x. Okay, great. So this is 2 thirds to the power x. That's u. And now we can go ahead and log both sides with natural log. That's my favorite. And then x moves to the front. That's what is good about logging both sides. You know, that's going to give us x times ln 2 thirds equals ln 1 half, right? That's ln, let me write it in a nicer way, okay? And then by division, we get x equals ln 1 half divided by ln 2 thirds. Great, so this is cool. How about the other solution? This is going to be actually more interesting. This gives us u equals negative 1. If u plus 1 is equal to 0, u equals negative 1. And we already knew that, right, before factoring. But this is not good, or maybe this is good. I don't know. You will decide. If this is equal to 2 thirds to the power x, uh-oh, x is not a real number. doesn't matter. It's a complex number. In this case, let's go ahead and write the negative 1 in polar form. We can write it as since negative 1 appears here with pi as our principal angle, whatever, we can write it as e to the power 2n plus 1 pi i. Odd multiples of pi is always going to give you pi, 3 pi, 5 pi, so on and so forth. It's the equivalent to negative 1. And from here, by ln'ing both sides, ln 2 thirds to the power x equals ln e to the power something. Remember, ln e is 1. So when this moves to the front, you're going to get that. And if you move this to the front, you're going to get x times ln 2 thirds equals 2n plus 1, where n is an integer, by the way, an element of z. And by division, you get x equals 2n plus 1 odd multiples of pi times i divided by ln 2 
thirds. Great. Uh, now, if n is equal to 1, then you're going to get a particular solution, which is pi i over ln 2 thirds. And the rest is left as an exercise. You can go ahead and plug it in and check your work. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.